Okay, everybody. So we've been talking about DC circuits. Maybe you saw some of the YouTube videos. I hope you did. Um, we've got a battery here. That's the positive end of the battery. And historically, uh, you know, people always just assumed that it was the positives that were moving. Um, we'll talk about that in a second. So we just imagine positive charges are moving through the bulb. And the bulb has got a couple of parts to it that you ought to be aware of. This is a regular incandescent bulb. And the side of the bulb here is metal. And it's connected to a wire that goes up to a little filament. That metal filament gets very hot. When it gets hot, it glows with light. And then the filament continues down here to a wire. And it goes through the middle of this uh, uh, end of the bulb and down to the bottom where there is another conductor. That conductor is separated from the sides of the bulb by these little insulating plastic. The uh, bulb then is connected to the other end of the battery. So the charges complete the circuit in making the light. So what makes a conductor a conductor? It all has to do with the electrons. In the structure of an atom, the electrons are held to the nucleus. And when you have a conductor, the valence electrons are held loosely and they can move around in a wire. So that would mean if we put something over here that was positive and we put something here that was negative, the electrons are gonna to want to move in this direction if it's a conductor. If it's an insulator, then they're held very tightly and they can't move. Now let's talk about the flow of the charges. Imagine this whole thing is a wire and I've just got it down very thin. It's only one atom thick. Now imagine that, um, I have something positive over here, and it's gonna pull this electron off. That electron's gonna go over to here. That's gonna leave this atom with a positive charge. We're gonna then move the electron from here to here. That atom is now neutral, and the positive moves this way. The negative moved that way. That negative is gonna move over to here. And the positive, now that this is neutral, the positive is over here. And then we're gonna move this negative over to here, and the positive will move over this way. So as you can see, when the negatives are moving this way, the positive is moving this way. So historically, they didn't know which ones, which charges were really moving. Um, and so it's always been set up as the current is positive motion of this positive charge, even though the negatives now that we realize are going that way. It all works out to be the same thing. We're gonna draw the symbol for a battery. And that's what it looks like when we're drawing schematic diagrams for uh, circuits. And what's going on here is these lines represent the metal uh, terminals inside a chemical cell. The chemicals inside the battery have chemical potential energy, and they will turn into electrical potential energy when the charges uh, flow, or as the charges get pushed. Um, the chemicals do get used up, and then the battery dies. Uh, you can reverse the flow and recharge the battery in certain circumstances, depending on the chemicals that are in there. Each one of these groups is part of the battery, and they represent the amount, uh, there's a certain voltage that will be generated in each one. Like you might get 0.75 volts for a certain chemical reaction across these two plates. And then you're gonna get another 0.75 volts here. And then to get to together, they're gonna add up to a 1.5 volt battery. Um, the reason why they actually call it a battery is because when the guys were first building these things, um, they were like little cylinders of chemicals and they were all lined up. And they realized that the more you add in this direction, the more voltage you get. And then if you add it this way in parallel, you can get more current out of them. And in other words, you're making a stronger battery. Well, the term battery came from looking at the troops lining up. When the, you have a battery of troops, you can line them up this way and line them up this way and make for a stronger uh, attacking force. And I should say that in chemistry, you learned about this when you were doing redox reactions. And now a quick review of what voltage is. We did this earlier. You could think of it as work per charge, or you could think of it as potential energy per charge, depending on the context of the question. Um, so in a, if we said that a battery had a 1.5 volt 
value. That means we could get one joule, sorry, 1.5 joules for every coulomb of charge that flows through there. So if we take a look at this battery and we say we have a positive charges are flowing around this way, we're gonna look at the positive flow. The positive charges are gonna gain potential energy here. And then they're gonna lose their potential energy across the resistor. Across the wire, there's no loss of energy. Well, that's ideally. We're assuming that there's no resistance in these wires. Well, we'll talk about current. The symbol for current is I, and it's charge per time. So if we wanted to know how much current was flowing through here, we'd have to put in a meter. And that meter is going to be represented by the letter A, and it stands for an ammeter. It measures amps. Current is measured in amps. And if we had, say, for example, the 1.5 coulombs of charge flowing through that point here in one second, we would say we have 1.5 amps. Well, as we were saying, the voltage is the work per charge. We're going to gain voltage here. We're going to lose voltage there. And we just said that the current is the charge per time. And this is all really based on potential energy. Do we have to worry about the kinetic energy? Well, it turns out that the mass of an electron, which is the ones that are really moving, it's very small. It's about 9.1 times 10 to the negative 31 kilograms. And the velocity of these electrons, it's very slow. It's on the order of something like maybe uh, 0.05 meters per second, depending on the current. Um, square. When you do the math for this, the kinetic energy is really small. I did about 1.14 times 10 to the minus 33 uh, joules. Now that's kinetic energy. Now if we come up here and we say that the potential energy per charge is the voltage, and our voltage was 1.5 volts, then we could go take that same amount of charge and go figure out what the PE is. The PE is going to be Q times the voltage. And the Q is the charge on an electron or a proton, 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. And we're going to multiply that by the 1.5 volts. And when we do, we get 2.4 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. Now you might say that's a very small number, but compare that to this one. That's the potential energy that these charges get from the battery. Each electron or proton, how you want to look at it, each one is getting that much. The kinetic energy is only times 10 to the minus 33. We don't worry about kinetic energy in these circuits. It's ridiculously small. So this is our resistor, and it has the uh, symbol in the, in the math as uh, R, and the unit is ohms, and the symbol for the unit is the capital Greek letter omega. And we did an experiment with an ohmmeter. I took the ohmmeter, and I was able to take the probes, and I put it to something like a quarter. It's made out of metal. It was a good conductor. We basically got zero ohms. Then I changed it to a sheet of paper, and I put it on the paper. When I put the probes into the paper, we got a 0, 0.0. There was an L next to it. Well, that just meant that the probes are essentially disconnected. We have an infinite amount of resistance for the paper. The paper is a very good insulator. It does not let the electric does not let the electrons flow. Then I took the probes and I touched them to my hands. And my hands went through my body. And the current actually does go through here. The ohm meter does send out a very small amount of current to see how hard it is to get it through. And I ended up with something like about 4 million ohms. 
when I licked my hands, it went down to about two or maybe three million ohms. Well, I've made the conduction a little bit better by adding some ions to the liquid. Then I took graphite, a lead pencil, and I colored a line on the paper. I put the probe here, and I put the probe here. And for a short distance, I had a resistance, and then I increased the distance, and then I increased the distance some more. What happened to the resistance as this distance increased? The resistance also increase. That just tells us that it's harder for charges to move through a longer distance through a material. So what we say is resistance is additive when in series. So series just means one after the other. Then I colored in the line wider. And what's that mean? Well, the resistance actually decreased. It's a little like adding extra lanes to a highway to relieve a traffic jam. There's more places for the charges to flow, making it easier for them to flow. Now I assemble my circuit again. And this time I'm going to put in an ammeter over here, measuring the current. And as I do this experiment, I'm going to keep replacing that battery with a battery with, I'll add more batteries. Let's put it that way, okay? So I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna add another battery. And then I can add yet another battery and another battery. But what I wanna do is measure the current each time I add another battery. And I'm gonna measure the voltage versus the current. When I have no batteries at all, no voltage, I have no current. If I add more batteries, I have more voltage. I get more current. I'm gonna add another battery. I'm gonna get more current. I'm gonna add another battery. I'm gonna get more current. It turns out this is a straight line for that resistor. Keeping that constant, that resistor is not gonna change. So this is a linear equation, isn't it? The voltage that I'm applying to this resistor will be equal to some constant times the current. This is like y equals mx. Well, what do you think the slope is on this equation? The only thing that's constant in this circuit right now is the resistance. So the voltage is equal to the resistance times the current. Well, we don't normally write it this way. We write it we write voltage is equal to IR. This is Ohm's law. I'm going to replace the resistor with a light bulb. And I'm still going to keep my ammeter in there and measure the current. Let's see. What if that voltage was a 5 volt battery? And the current, the ammeter, read um, 250 milliamps. Would you be able to calculate the resistance of the bulb in this circuit? We're going to say the voltage across this bulb is equal to the current flowing through the bulb times the resistance of the bulb. If we gain 5 volts from the battery, we're going to lose 5 volts going across the light bulb. The current is 0 0.250 amps, and now we'll solve for, solve for the resistance. I get 20 ohms. Now, we can test this with the ohmmeter directly. We can remove the bulb. and connect it, the two probes, to the meter. And set the meter to the ohms setting. Now, in reality, when I do this, I don't get 20 ohms. I only get maybe uh, 1.2 ohms. I'm just making up that number now, but that's the way it worked in the video. We really did do something like this. 
Um, why is that resistance so much lower? Well, when we take the bulb out of the circuit, it's no longer hot. You don't have current flowing through it. It turns out that the resistance increases greatly when the current flows through there to make it hot and glow. All right, last one. We put batteries in series and the voltage is added. What's gonna happen if we put resistors in series? Oh, isn't that interesting? So I'm gonna call that R1, I'll call that R2. We'll have our five volt battery, that's the positive end, that's the negative end. And I'm gonna put my little ammeter in here. Let's say when I build this circuit, uh, this resistor is going to be 100 ohms. And then the ammeter is going to read, uh, oh, let's say 40 milliamps. The amount of current that's flowing through this ammeter is 40 milliamps. How much current do you think is flowing through this resistor here? It's got to be the same amount. There's no other place for this current to go. Remember, current is charge per time. If a million electrons flow here, then a million got to flow through here. There's no other place for them to go. So I'm going to ask you, what is the voltage drop across the first resistor? Well, V across a resistor is equal to I times R. We know the current is 0 0.040 amps. And we know that resistance is 100 ohms. So that means we know we have a four volt drop across that resistor. Now, what do you think this resistance has to be over here? We can apply Ohm's law again to this one. We can say voltage is equal to I times R. Now, think about voltage as being like a potential energy. We gain five volts of potential energy, that's five joules for every charge. Over here, we lost four joules from here to here. How much do you think we're losing across the rest? It better be one volt, because whatever we gain, we're coming back to the battery, we're gonna have to get back to the same level that we started at. So we're gonna gain five, we're gonna lose five. That means we're losing one volt here. How much current is flowing through this circuit? 40 milliamps. If 40 goes through here, 40 have to go through there too. There's no other place for it to go. So we're going to put in the 0 0.040 amps. And now we can solve for the resistance. Okay, we get 25 ohms. So that's for R2. Uh, I think that'll do it for now.